Lakeland Public Television presents Currents. Good evening and welcome to Lakeland Currents. I'm Bethany Wesley. The second annual Bemidji Gamag Powwow will be held April 23rd at the Sanford Center in Bemidji. While powwows typically bring together American Indians, this particular powwow is unique in that it also encourages non-Indians to come and experience a powwow for themselves. Tonight, I welcome to our program Daryl Northbird, the Bemidji Gamag Sanford Center powwow organizer, and Maggie Montgomery, general manager of Northern Community Radio. Together, we are going to discuss not only the details of the upcoming Bemidji Gamag powwow, but also some general rules of etiquette and what you can expect to see and experience. Welcome to the program, guys. Thanks for joining me. Thank you for having us. Before we get to the actual particulars of this actual powwow that's coming up in April 23rd, I want to talk generally, Daryl, if I can, about powwows. What is a powwow? Why are they held? Are they religious? Are they celebrations? Is it just a community event? What's kind of the reason for hosting a powwow? Well, you know, the, a long time ago it used to be just a gathering where uh, the villages would come together in the springtime of the year to find on out, you know, who had passed away, when babies are born, uh, good matches for younger ones, um, and general news like we're doing now. Okay. Has the role of a powwow changed historically then versus what they're held for today? Yeah, uh, now we have a influence, uh, rodeo influence actually, that's where we get the grand entry coming on in. Okay. And that is basically fashioned after the grand entry at rodeo. Oh, okay, rodeos, okay. And now, how long have they been held? I'm assuming for decades, centuries, years? Um, gotta be centuries, you know, I'm, I'm not that old, <laughs> <laughs> but yes. Uh, Basically, they've been for years. That's how we'd, we'd find out about each other. Okay. And from what you said earlier, they were usually held in the spring. So were they an annual event? Well, spring, fall of the year. Okay. Uh, they'd get together. We'd do our ceremonies. Uh, and um, basically, uh, they're looking for the good life. They call it Bima Okay. I want to turn more specifically toward this powwow that's coming up here in a couple of weeks. So let's start first with the name. We got the Bemidji Magog Powwow. Where does that term come from? That that was the the term used here. Uh, Bemidji Magog is 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 like something going through like like the stomach because this um, uh, the lake out here is shaped like a stomach, and then there's a river that runs through it. So that's why it was okay. called that. And so is it fair to say that as white settlers came to town, it was shortened to Bemidji? Is that where the name came from? Or I have no idea how that... I was just curious. Yeah, but it, it's still close to the original name, so okay. I'm sure that they just shortened it up. Okay, interesting. I want to talk about this powwow specifically. It was held for the first time last April. This is coming back now for the second year. I'm assuming it's planned to become an annual event? We're working Hopefully. on it. Yes. <laughs> Always a work in progress, yes. What was the reasons or what was the effort to hold this particular powwow. Each of the, the, the tribes around here do hold their own powwows as well. But what was the reason for this particular powwow? Go, go ahead, Maggie. Well, um, this powwow um, came about because uh, we had uh, an opportunity to get some funding from the Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund along with um, the folks at uh, KOJB. Okay. So the two of our radio stations um, together applied for funding. Uh, we wanted to do something that had some meaning to the community and that would do some good. For a while we thought we might um, do something with the uh, statue ceremony that was going to be taking place, but it was outside the window we had to work in. And so, that's the reference to the new Chief Bemidji or the Shainawishkum yes, statue? Yes, yes, the okay. Shainawishkum statue. But um, so I called Rita Albright, the mayor, and I just said, you know, um, is there something you guys have wanted to do that we could help do that would would uh, further things for the community? Mm -hmm. And so she's the one who said, how about a powwow? We've always wanted to have a powwow at the Sanford Center, but we've never had the means to make that really happen. So um, so I talked, I, we found Daryl 
<laughs> who who actually Wandering knows around how the streets. to make powwows happen. <laughs> uh, Brad, Brad Walhoff is the manager of KOJB, okay. in, and that's the Leech Lake Community Radio Station. And so he and I worked together, and Brad knew Daryl and brought Daryl in, and Daryl actually had the connections to make that happen. So we brought some funding. We brought partial funding. We had to find more funding, of course, because it was never enough. Sure. And we worked really hard to make it happen because we wanted to do something that would do something good in town, awesome. basically. Fair to say that Bemidji's a fairly it's an obvious choice to host a powwow because of the three reservations around that you can bring in not only from one tribe but from several different reservations at once in, in addition to the people who just live here right generally. and the facility as well uh, this time of year the weather isn't really great for powwows so uh, having the Sanford Center and using it for something really good like this was also an opportunity in Bemidji so. this is also the gateway of the north I don't know if you've mm -hmm. heard it call that so anything that goes above here, you know, uh, people are coming through here. Okay. I want to make sure we touch on this. Last year you had obtained some grant funds, and now this year the funding is a little bit unique in terms of who's came together to help bring it to fruition, correct? Right. Yep. We, we are working with a larger organization now that's an organization of all of the community radio stations in Minnesota. It's called AMPERS. It's the Associate Association of Minnesota Public Educational Radio Stations and so the stations now have pooled some money together and most of the stations contributing money are Native American stations in the state of Minnesota who had legacy money that they wanted to put to a good use. So uh, through our organization, we were able to put together the basic funding, and then we had some additional funding from Nielsen Foundation again this year, which was really critical. Oh, that's great. Mm -hmm. It's nice to see that buy-in and that support from, from locals as well. Yeah, and not just Nielsen, but a lot of community organizations and businesses are you know, they've cast in with us and they're part of it supporting the whole thing. Fair to say the first year was a success. You guys had, I believe if I remember correctly, it was over 3,500 people. The governor was Correct. here, Governor yeah. Dayton was yes. here. Excited to hopefully build on that this year. Do you expect more attendees? Do you expect? Yes, um, right now the uh, Secretary of State is confirmed, which is Steve Simon. He, okay. He's coming okay. and he wants to address the tribes uh, uh, about better relations. Oh, okay. Oh, and, I, and then also uh, the mayor again, and this time I do believe uh, more of the city council will be coming. Last year we competed against Easter weekend, so. Good. I want to move a little bit more into, because I know there's viewers out there who have an interest in going, but if you haven't been to a powwow, you kind of have images in your head. It might be, I don't want to say it, you're not nervous, but you might have a little bit of a hesitancy to go in until you know what to expect. So if we could just talk about some of the terminology and some of what they might see. So when you read about this powwow, you hear that the grand entries are at 1 and at 7 p.m. So what exactly is a grand entry? We, we talked earlier, it's kind of like a rodeo entry, but what is it that people will see? What is it that happens? Well, uh, we have invited the tribal leaders again this year, and they are all already confirming that they'll be here. Okay. And then uh, we, we have the, their honor guards from their reservations come on in and, and dance behind them and beside them with their flag. Okay. And we do have, uh, a, we have reached out to other um, tribal leaders. And so far, well, we're getting close. It's election year and for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> sure. so. I understand. But what's your take on it, Maggie? The grand entry? It's, um, you know, everybody gets lined up. They get lined up, like Daryl said, behind the tribal leaders and the honor guard and the dignitaries and then the royalty, I think. The royalty, yeah. There are There is royalty. Oh, sure. okay. And then various kinds of dancers come in groups after that in a certain order. But the drums begin, the singing begins, and the whole procession moves into the arena. And I think it's clockwise. Clockwise, yeah. Oh, great. It always is clockwise. So if you're going to go to a powwow, does it make sense that you would want to be there for a grand entry? Is that like kind of the first mm -hmm. opening kind of for the, the whole event? Okay. Yeah. Yes, that's exactly it. Okay, great. You talked a little bit about drum groups, so let's talk about the music. You hear the beating of the drums, and 
it, it, they're very moving. Tell us a little bit, what is a drum group or how many are composed of it? Does it vary? It varies. Um, uh, in the past, it was more, they, they wouldn't let the children sing. Okay. They needed to earn that spot there okay. um, on the drums. And the, and the drums for, the bigger drum for us, it was dreamt by a woman for men. Uh, because we can't have babies, oh. women have babies, and that's their gift. So our gift is, is to sit on these drums and to, to help with uh, ceremonies and whatever else that we got going on. Oh, fascinating. Are there multiple drum groups for each band, for each tribe, or is it, does one represent the whole group, or no? No, and nowadays they, they, they'll form a drum group and the younger men will come on in, and even the younger kids will come on in and start singing, start okay. learning. Oh, beautiful. Um, I want to talk a little bit about the dancing, the regalia that people see. You know, when you see a powwow, you got all those colorful dresses and the gowns and the wares. There's different types of regalia, correct? And it reflects the type of dancing that individual does? Is yes. that true? Okay. So how does one... Is it chosen? Is it passed down through families in terms of whether you're a jingle dress or fancy shawl? Is it up to each individual? Uh, well, nowadays, you know, before, um, a lot of them would dream the dresses, you know, and, and then they'd go ahead and put those on. It's, it's kind of like the, their finest. Okay. Uh, the, these dresses nowadays um, are with all the colors out there, um, the bead work, the beads that are, that are out there, and everything. These dresses can and, and regalia for any one of them can reach up anywhere from ten to twenty thousand dollars per regalia. Oh wow! Yes, they're very expensive. Oh, interesting. And so, people when they go to a powwow, they'll see at this particular powwow, you might see the jingle dress, right? You have the fancy shawl. Correct. And then you have traditional. Yes, both men and women. Both men and women. Am I missing another one? Uh, grass kind of dancers. Oh, the grass dancers. Thank you. So, uh, and, and then, uh, will you see, as a spectator, then those groups of people coming out for certain songs, or is it everybody all at once? It, it depends. Uh, if and in your tribal, everybody's encouraged to come on out. Uh, if there's a special, just just a certain uh, dance will come on out, and then there's category dance, and uh, usually at the end of the powwow where they'll come on out and dance it. Uh, just, just that, if just jingle dress, just men's traditional or grass, um, before they go and get their honorarium. So, um, one of the really neat things about this powwow is that the MCs understand that there are people there who don't know what's going on. Seems like when people line up to come in for the grand entrance, they all know what they're doing. But those of us who are visiting and mm -hmm. don't, we we have to rely on what we're hearing from the MCs, and they'll tell us when to dance, what to do. You just, if you can listen and pay attention, you learn so much about who is dancing and who can dance, and and what's going on and what drum is next because the drum, the drumming is passed around during the event. So um, you just learn a lot by listening to the MCs because, and they explain things very nicely and very well. Oh, nice. So obviously you were there at the powwow last year. What was the experience like for you, Maggie? It was thrilling, yeah. actually. When the drums started and the grand entry came, I just got chills. It was, oh, cool. it was an amazing thing. The, and go the governor cried. Oh, did he? He did cry. Oh, yes. interesting. One of the things that's unique about the Sanford Center, you know, is you have the technology that comes with the big arena, and you've got jumbotron. Is it does it change the feel of a powwow to of you? Of course it does. You're watching everybody come in like this. <laughs> you see, they're just watching the ground. Everybody's looking the other way. They're looking up. Yeah. And everybody's seeing if they're going to be on or not. Yeah. Everybody hoping. Did every you know the dancers all want kind yeah. of their turn? Yeah. And, and then of course once the camera you know is on them, they'll cut loose you know and really dance hard. So. <laughs> Nice. And the kids too. There are many young young people that dance from little tots up to teens, and some of the teenagers are royalty, and they have beautiful clothing, dresses, and and all their outfits are just phenomenal. And um, but it's so fun to watch those little kids dance. And some are like little grass dancers. Some are little jingle dress dancers. They're just and they do a wonderful job in it. 
And I think, um, you know, last year when the governor was watching, I think it was a lot of the kids that were catching his eye. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah, the new generation is coming up. Yeah. Interesting. I want to talk a little bit about the feast. There's a communal feast that served at this event, and yes. um, it's free, correct, for correct. whoever comes. Yeah. Tell me a little bit, how many did you feed last year? Do you have ideas in terms of how many attended? It, you know, I when I went to the... Uh, the ballroom, that's where we serve it at. Uh, and by the way, that's where all the vendors are. Okay. But when I went on in there, it was it was just packed. and. Oh. But I, I had different duties I had to do, so I sure. was in and out, so. I was serving. Oh, yeah. Was it interesting to see the mix of the people from what you could see? You know, you've got the powwow dancers along with the people who came to visit and observe. I mean, mm -hmm. one of the goals of the, the powwow, correct me if I'm wrong, is to kind of foster some greater understandings, cross cultures. It, did you see that while you were observing the powwow? Sure, yeah. There were all kinds of people there and uh, they were young and old, different backgrounds, different cultures, and, it, and everybody ate together. So oh. yeah, it was, very, it was very fun to serve food at the powwow, but it was, it was really busy. There were a <laughs> lot of people and it was a lot of work at the time. I bet, I bet. How's the planning going for the feast this year? Everything's going, coming. I know we've had, you know, it's, you got some time to kind of finalize <laughs> everything, but what's the menu going mean, to, it's coming from local sources, right? The food comes from local Correct. sources? Yes. Uh, Marketplace Foods is donating three items on our plate. Okay. Uh, and the Red Lake Fisheries uh, donated a lot of fish. Okay. And then we're looking to uh, Leech Lake to, we're asking them for the rice. So. Okay. What is it historically, what has the feasts been at powwows? I mean, I'm assuming food has been a part of a powwow for, since they've been held. Is it similar, you know, local foods, it's sharing with your neighbor? Uh, well, here, uh, it, it's not just the local foods, what's going on here, this is a, the Safford Center, so they have to prepare it here. Oh, okay. But at other powwows, everybody will come on in, they'll bring dishes there. And, and that's what will be served. Okay. But feasts are, have always traditionally been held in some, some form with the powwow? Okay. Interesting. And I wanted to note this because it is unusual for people who may not be familiar, but there's no alcohol usually at powwows, correct? Or at this powwow, at yeah. least? That's and, right. Okay. And no powwows. Okay. And they, they are expressly asked to leave. Oh, really? Okay. If they are drinking drugs, whatever. Okay. Even the Sanford Center is even covering up all of their alcohol-related ads during oh, the powwow just oh, to cool. play down that aspect. People must be surprised. Visitors, you know, because you go to hockey, hockey games, whatever, you're, <laughs> you know, it's traditional or it's normal for some to have a, a beer or two. It must be unusual for them to go and find out that there's not. So that's, that's interesting. Well, you know, a lot of things have been taken away from us through alcohol, so. Yeah. So. Interesting. Um, I want to talk about the language because we, we touched on it a little bit with the name of the powwow itself, but I'm assuming when people go to the powwow they're hearing your, your language. Correct. How important is it to share that language with others? You know, when, when we get our people coming on up to, to do the language, right now there is a lack of the language amongst the native people, the Ojibwe people. and. It's always been my feeling that, well, when you go there, you're going to hear it so that, you know, you become familiar with your own language again. And there's a lot of revitalization about the language going on right now in a lot of organizations. So I, I, we're, we're bringing it back. Mm -hmm. I know that's been an effort of shared vision here in Bemidji for, for many years, too. And that's why you see a lot of that dual signage in Bemidji in both, in both Ojibwe and English. And that, that's even... Is that expanded even further at this powwow, or is it, I, I know that the Sanford Center has always kind of had that dual language also, but I, I know I heard references last year that people would be able to see the Ojibwe next to the English at the powwow, at least um, some. Okay. I think some of it. Okay. So, yeah, have very minimal at this point. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think more at the powwow, you more hear the Ojibwe language spoken, which is, it's a little different than reading it on a door. It's, um, it's real, it's um, organic, it, it is um, traditional, it's what's going on that has gone on for a long time, so you're hearing a lot of very traditional Ojibwe language at the powwow. 
And then you talked earlier about how the MCs are familiar or aware of the fact uh -huh. that some people are seeing this for the first time. So is there translation for those who Oh yeah, don't they speak, speak English too. So you understand yep. at least what's being said so you yeah. can take it both ways. Mm -hmm. Great. What else do people experience at the powwow that you would want people to have a, an awareness of before they would attend? Anything in particular that you would want them to be aware of before they, mm -hmm. before they came? Well, um, I don't know an experience, but uh, uh, kind of like the do's and don'ts, the etiquettes. Sure. Yeah, we were going to talk some about the photography because when you go to a powwow and you see all these bright colors and the dancers, you know, for those of us who are unfamiliar, you're tempted to just start snapping pictures. It's beautiful. Is that something that they welcome? Is we, it something you? We we will definitely welcome welcome that at this powwow. If there are certain points where they will not be able to take pictures, then there again, our MCs are well versed in everything that. Uh, you're going to see and what you can and cannot do uh, like and then another thing is is that if you're going up to someone uh, it's just like it's just you and me and I come up to you and can I take your picture it's an etiquette thing you know uh, it's no different asking them if you can take a picture and that's probably the same way with children that you would want to pe perhaps if you see a, a guardian or a parent nearby to just do you mind if I snap a picture of your kid kind correct of thing? Did you take a lot of pictures from last oh, yes. year? I'm sure there were just hundreds of them. Yes, mm -hmm. I did. Um, and one of the things I did was take a little video of the grand entry because it was so impressive. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, there's a lot to see and a lot to take pictures of if you like to look through a lens. <laughs> it's always <laughs> Instead that of taking question, it in, right? Right, right. yes, exactly. Do you want to take its picture, mm -hmm. but yeah. Interesting, great. Um, I want to talk more about um, some more of the etiquette thing. Is there things that are there moments that are more spiritual or that people should remove headgear, that they should be more respectful of what someone's saying, or are there prayers? Um, There'll be all of those things. And once again, you know, we're, we're, we're looking to our MCs, and they will definitely uh, cue everybody in, you know, as what we can, what, what we should be doing at that point in time. Okay. Everybody rise, everybody remove your headgear, mm -hmm. that type of thing. When you look back on last year, was there a favorite moment or a favorite memory that really kind of jumps out at you? Mm. It was all pretty. It was all pretty neat. Um, I think the grand entries are phenomenal. Mm -hmm. um, serving the food and helping serve people the meal was a lot of fun. It was work, but it was so fun to talk to everybody one on one as they came through the line. Um, at the end, um, there was an honor dance that was really, um, you know, it was really impactful for me, and um, it was just a, it was a very, it was a very long day, but it was a worthwhile day. And I'm sure that just looking out and seeing everybody enjoying themselves and people taking it in for the first time or their hundredth time mm -hmm. just had to be pretty cool to see. Yeah. Now, Daryl, you were the organizer for the event last year as well as this year. Was there some, a point last year that you kind of stepped back and you just said, wow, we really pulled this together and it, it's a great experience? Um, probably at that point in time is when everybody came down that, that helped organize the Powell. Everyone. It wasn't just myself. It definitely wasn't. Um, like we had Curtis, the CEO of the Sanford Center, come on down, Maggie. And Brad, we all joined together, and I think that was the the, the point for me where I you know, really got me because I, I I've been to a thousand powwows. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> so, how long did you give yourselves to kind of decompress before you jumped into planning for this year's? A couple well, months. Yeah, <laughs> a little bit of a break, <laughs> and then you kind of reviewed what you know, things you would change, if yes, any, for this we year. Yes, we did. We held a, you know, we held, held a meeting to recap what we could do better the next time if we could find the funding the next time. Mm -hmm. And then we tried to figure out a way to make that happen, which we did. So oh, that was good. Always. I want to talk about the powwow as one piece of the bigger picture. You talked a little bit earlier about, you know, language revitalization, and we talked about, you know, cultural understanding and things like that. There are several efforts underway in the greater Bemidji region to kind of do those things. Are you involved with some of the others as well, such as like Shared Vision and some of the other programs as well? Or is this kind of your your baby or? Yeah, 
if they come and ask me, I'll I'll pick and choose. Okay. Uh, right now, I, I'm I'm real busy. Besides this, you know, this oh, is sure. mm -hmm. you know. I know that you know the Shea Nawishkung statue was a big part of that. That was the unveiling of the new the Chief Bemidji statue on the waterfront. Um, they have the language revitalization. Um, Grand Rapids has Indigenous Peoples Day. I think they held mm -hmm. one, if not two, of those. So it's have you have you been hearing more? Have you see take you know heard more pieces of people talking about ways to kind of bridge that understanding to kind of cross that? I think there are many efforts going on in the community, and they all kind of help in their own way. You know, there's the reconciliation um, effort as well as the language and um, and the statue project that, that took place. And the powwow, you know, there's a lot of ways people are trying to do better. Um, I think we have a little way to go and, and I think those of us who um, hope that people get together in better relations, we have to prove ourselves because um, I think um, it takes that because some people have been hurt more than others and you have to go the extra way in order to do, you know, to make things right, to set things right. One of the things that I know from last year's powwow that they had talked about was the flags, the, the exchanging of gifts. Um, can you talk a little bit about which gifts were exchanged? Because I know that was kind of a big piece, the flags outside of the Sanford Center. Yes, it, it was going to be a small piece at, in the beginning. Uh, it's uh, what's that group that, that does the overseeing of, of the things for the Sanford Center? That's uh, the Tony Troyer and all the moves. Uh, I'm not oh, sure. I don't know. Okay, well, there's a group that oversees that. But they were just going to have a small thing. And then Brad Waloff, the uh, KOJB uh, radio station manager, had said, well, no, we'd like to bring that out into the light and oh. make that a bigger, better thing. And of course, you know, uh, Rita was thrilled about it, she, she, she asked yes, let's do this. And so we went out and got gifts for her. And, we, and she didn't really know how to do it at the time, so I just came forward and I said, well, yeah, this is how we would do it. You know, uh, we would get, we'd get it, you'd get a gift for them and exchange that gift for them flags okay. and give them tobacco. And right. So that's what was done. Great. Well, we're looking forward to seeing the event. I know I will be there on the 23rd. We hope that you also will join us. Um, thank you guests for joining me today, Daryl and Maggie. We appreciate talking about this. Thank you for watching Lakeland Currents. I'm Bethany Wesley. Have a great night. Mm -hmm.